Let's go to launch this control. This is Skylab launch control. We're passing the six-minute mark in the countdown now. Various personnel now reporting into the spacecraft test supervisor, Bill Schick, that they are ready and go for launch. Bob Reed, the spacecraft test conductor, has indicated that the spacecraft is go. Launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, reports go. And the director of launch operations, Walter Caprian, also has reported go for launch. Final computer programs are now being run to place the launch vehicle in a launch mode. In the spacecraft, the final actions to be taken there will be at the T-minus four minute mark. Paul Weitz will turn on the spacecraft batteries. And at T-minus 45 seconds, the last action to be taken by the crew will be taken by Pete Conrad when he makes a final guidance alignment. We're coming up now to the five minute mark. At that time, the swing arm, swing arm number nine, will come back to the full retract position. Actually, for the Saturn 1B, there are only five swing arms. The number nine designation comes from the earlier launches using this same mobile launcher uh, using the Saturn V. The swing arm now coming back to the full retract position. It will remain in that full retract position now uh, for the rest of the countdown. At T minus three minutes and seven seconds, the count will go on the automatic sequencer and will be carried out automatically from that time on. Now T minus four minutes, 39 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. And if it looks like it's another routine launch, it is and it isn't. In a sense it is because it's another Saturn 1B, uh, not that unusual a launch. In another sense, it's an extraordinary launch because NASA is up against the wall. Without Skylab, it lacks both the medical knowledge and the political arguments it needs to go ahead with its multi-billion dollar space shuttle. If this rescue or salvage effort fails, NASA will have to delay the shuttle to get the $500 million extra it will cost to fly the backup Skylab, Skylab B, next year. It's kind of ironic, Frank, because Skylab started as a quiet little poor man's workshop, a poor man's space station, that almost got lost in the shadow of the multi-billion dollar Apollo program. Mm -hmm. In many senses, it got the backup people, the secondary people. Its program management left something to be desired and still leaves something to be desired, in my opinion, uh, which is the reason we're in the trouble we're in now. Now NASA is up against the wall. This launch must succeed, or the whole space program stops cold in its tracks for the next year or two. Yes, it's important to, uh, to have this work successfully, or, or the shuttle is in uh, some jeopardy. Um, Dr. Well, Fletcher said so the other day, Chris, Chris Kraft has told her, we're looking at launch control now, and I can assure you, this is a very nervous launch. In many ways, a lot more nervous than a lot of the Apollos to the moon that somehow seemed to get so routine, although they really weren't. Uh, well, of course, this mission has had its problems. Last time we were here, uh, sitting at this desk, why we expected that to come back the next day and see what this is about to happen. Launch happen. Control. The launch sequence has started. We are now on the automatic sequencer and the countdown will be run now by that automatic sequencer. A number of functions are carried out by the sequencer and they must be carried out in the proper order or they would be automatically shut down. Also uh, at the same time the launch crew here in the firing room will continue to monitor their various readouts, temperatures, checking the gauges for pressures and rates. They could override the sequencer if necessary. At the uh, <coughs> T-minus three minute and six second mark, the automatic sequencer terminated the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen replenishing. These cryogenic fuels had been re being replenished since fueling was actually completed early this morning. After this uh, termination, the fuel tanks will be pressurized. Actually, uh, pressurization has now started. The second stage liquid oxygen tank has now been pressurized and the first stage fuel tank also has been pressurized. Now passing the two minute mark in the countdown. The vents closing and the pressurization is taking place on the two stages of the Saturn 1B. At the T-minus one minute, uh, 15 second mark, Paul Weitz will trip two switches it's in the command module, cloudy, placing yeah. the spacecraft uh, batteries online. Dark. These batteries I don't think large control sees it yet, but a low deck of rain clouds has suddenly begun to, to move cells. in, which is obviously going to obscure some of the view. This time, T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. And our countdown continues to go smoothly. Also during the automatic sequence, we'll switch to inter internal power. We've been carrying uh, the power from a ground source up to this point to save on the flight batteries at T-minus 50 seconds. In the count, we'll switch to earn internal power and stay on internal power for the remainder of the count. 
We're approaching the one minute mark in our countdown. Mark, T minus one minute. One minute and counting in the launch of the first manned mission in Skylab. T minus 50 seconds, T minus 50 seconds and counting, and we are now going to internal power. All stages switching to internal power. Stages now and, and fuel tanks pressurized. Approaching the 30 second mark in the countdown. At 30 seconds, water will begin spraying on the deck of the mobile launcher. T minus 30 seconds and the countdown continuing to go smoothly. The Skylab itself orbiting some 780 nautical miles northeast of KSC at this time. T minus 17 seconds and counting. T minus 15. At T minus 3.1 seconds, we'll expect the engine sequence to start on the vehicle. T minus 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Engine sequence start. 2, 1, 0. We have launch commit and we have liftoff. The clock is running and Skylab has cleared the tower. Now controlling. The thrust is going all engines. Boy, is that a smooth ride. 25 seconds, pitch and roll program started. Skylab now maneuvering to its proper flight path attitude. Mark 35 seconds, one nautical mile on altitude. Given a green by range safety. Mark 45 seconds, cabin pressure relieving, adjusting now from sea level to a space environment. Mark 50 seconds, two nautical miles in altitude. The roll is complete, Houston. Roger. Stand by for mode one, Bravo. Mark, mode one, Bravo. Roger, propellant top is RCS command. Roger. Mark uh, one minute, eight seconds, roll program complete. LA Houston, your feet wet. Roger, your feet wet. That call up from Capcom, Dick Truly says Skylab now capable of water landing.